And now your WHSV Sports Report with Sports Director T.J. Eck. Chris Huffman has pitched for five different professional minor league baseball teams, reaching as high as AAA. That's just one step away from Major League Baseball. But this summer, Huffman is working to get back on a mound at local fields here in the Shenandoah Valley. Alex, hello from Frisco, Texas, where it has been windy and rainy here at Toyota Stadium throughout the day on Friday. Good evening, WHSB Sports Director TJ Eck coming to you from a remote location this evening as we do our best to continue working while also practicing social distancing. Good evening and welcome to the Atlantic Union Bank Center, where for the first time today, Basketball was played here in the brand new arena in Harrisonburg with the JMU men's and women's basketball teams both starting the 2020-2021 seasons at home today. Well, in the first game of the day, the JMU men opening the new arena in front of a very limited crowd against Division II Limestone University. Mark Byington coaching his first game at JMU. Playing in his first game for the Dukes, freshman forward Justin Amati, and he stole the show. He slams home a dunk in the first half, and moments later, it's more from Amadi. Alpha missed the putback one handed slam. This JMU's third appearance in the national title game in the last four years, but it's also the third matchup against North Dakota State in the playoffs in the last four years. So are the players and coaches calling it a rivalry yet? Well, we'll tell you more about that coming up later in sports. Covering the Dukes at Toyota Stadium in Frisco. TJ Eck, WHSV Sports. 2020 high school spring sports season was canceled in Virginia due to COVID-19. It ended the prep careers of seniors, but it also shut down the junior season for a local baseball star who's preparing to play at the highest level in college and perhaps even beyond professionally. Welcome to week one of end zone 2020, where we are in the midst of a unique high school football season with no games in Virginia this fall, but teams in West Virginia are playing and we start tonight with the Pendleton County Wildcats who were just one win away from appearing in the class A state title game last year and are again considered one of the top teams in the Mountain State this season. Pendleton County hosting Wyoming East tonight to open the season after two other matchups fell through for the Wildcats. First quarter Pendleton County QB Isaiah Gardner keeps it and he goes 25 yards deep into Wyoming East territory. A few plays later, Gardner finishes off the drive. He's in from two yards out. 7 0 Wildcats lead in this one. Stayed that way until the third quarter. Gardner this time through the air rolls out, hits Braden McClanahan. Great move there, then fights his way all the way down inside the 10 yard line before he's brought down. Leads to Dalton Dunkel from nine yards out. 14 0 penalty. County goes in front. The Wildcats defense brought it tonight too. Check this out. A host of Pendleton defenders combined for a TFL here in the third quarter. We jump ahead to the fourth. It's 21 nothing now. Dunkel puts the exclamation point on this one. 45 yard house call for the score. He had 134 yards and three touchdowns on just 12 carries. The Wildcats roll in the season opener defeating Wyoming East 28 nothing. Now the players were obviously upset after the this loss, but they also felt like they really battled back hard in the second half when it seemed like the Bison were going to pull away in this game. But JMU still made it close in the end, though. The Dukes coming up short, and NDSU wins another national title. And we've heard that probably around six or seven games is what we're looking at in a regular season before a postseason. But in your mind, what does the spring 2021 football season look like? The sport of NASCAR has not had a real race since early March, but in the meantime, local NASCAR Cup Series driver Quinn Half is doing his best to keep his driving skills sharp. That's the sound of a racing simulator from Sim Seats, a company based out of Richmond. The simulator includes a steering wheel, racing seat, pedals, multiple screens, and speakers, Mixed with a computer program from iRacing.com, it uses real racetracks to try and mimic the experience of driving in a stock car. John Judy was pitching at an all-conference level for Eastern Mennonite in 2020. I focused a lot more on my pitching aspect because I knew that was a part that I would need to be able to do to help the team. Judy, a senior from Shanks, West Virginia, ranked fifth in the ODAC with a 1.73 ERA to go along with 34 strikeouts in just 26 innings pitched. John's been a confident guy since he got on campus, but I think this year uh, um, it was, I think, less fabricated and more authentic to, to who he is. I, I think he really felt comfortable as a senior this year, taking on some more leadership. 
Judy's strong start in the spring was an extension from last summer when he dominated on the mound for the Broadway Bruins en route to earning RCBL Pitcher of the Year honors in 2019. Part of it was just enjoying being out there and, you know, playing with friends and just, you know, going out there and competing. And then that helped build my confidence coming into this year. And then it just took this year and ran with it. Really performing up to the, the level that he expects is something that's important. And so for him to, to really dominate in the RCBL, I think, led into what we've been able to do this year. And, you know, there's some good players in that league. And um, just understanding, you know, what, what he needs to do on the mound. But Judy isn't just a pitcher. He can hit, too. Judy was batting 317 across 41 at-bats for EMU in 2020, while also serving as a catcher. He says he plans to play again in the RCBL this summer and make a return to EMU next year for a fifth season, with the NCAA granting an extra season of eligibility for D3 spring athletes whose 2020 season was canceled due to COVID-19. My team is like my best friends, so getting to play another year with my best friends is like going to be really cool. WHSV Sports Director TJ Eck joins us from Frisco, where today he has a chance to talk with both teams. Hey, TJ. Good afternoon from Toyota Stadium, the site of the FCS National Championship this year and the last few years, of course. It's pretty nice, cool, overcast, nice, cloudy day here in Texas. We're enjoying some moderately pretty warm weather here so far, so it's been nice to be here in Texas. Now, today, Thursday, is media day for both squads here in Texas as we have a chance to talk with players and coaches from both squads ahead of the big matchup on Saturday. Up first today here in Frisco was the defending champs, North Dakota State, as the Bison spoke with a large media contingency, mainly from Fargo, as well as the few of us who made it down from the Commonwealth. For NDSU, Frisco and Toyota State Stadium is really starting to feel like a home away from home. The Bison have won seven of the last eight national titles at the FCS level, and they can complete a perfect season with a win on Saturday. It's really special. You know, we've gone through coaching changes and we've gone through quarterbacks and, and tons of different starters and, you know, a ton of different people to play my position. And, you know, I'm just another guy that, that gets to come in and carry the tradition along. I would say it's our unspoken expectation. Uh, our first first thing we say is we want to win the conference, you know, give us a chance to get into the playoffs. And then it's always in the back of our mind that we're going to go back to Frisco. The last, you know, eight to nine years of NDSU football have been unbelievable uh, in, in terms of winning, but also in terms of just the quality number of student athletes that have come through here, gone on and graduated, doing great things out there. As for the Dukes, we'll hear from JMU coming up later today. Kurt Signetti and the players are scheduled to meet with the media here at Toyota Stadium at 1.30 p.m. And we'll hear from the Dukes coming up tonight on WHSV News at 5 and 6, as well as throughout the rest of the evening here on WHSV. Again, a reminder, this game kicks off at noon Eastern time Saturday here at Toyota Stadium as JMU meets NDSU for the national championship. We'll have live coverage of that coming up that night, as well as the game will be broadcast live on WHSV that day at noon Eastern time covering the Dukes in Frisco, Texas, TJ Eck, WHSV Sports. And now your WHSV Sports Report with Sports Director TJ Eck. Norwood Pee Wee Barber is known as one of the best basketball players in the history of the Shenandoah Valley. He's now back in his hometown of Harrisonburg teaching the game to local youth. But for Barber, his journey from star player to teacher of the game has been anything but smooth. You finish either hand, I don't care. Whatever hand you weak in, you should finish on that hand. Pee Wee Barber has taken over the role of coach and teacher on the basketball court. No layups from here. We're going to take the layup from right here. But those who saw him play will tell you Barber is one of the best Shenandoah Valley hoopers of all time. When you talk about basketball players in this area, you would go with Ralph Sampson. You go with Kevin Madden. You go with uh, Mike Madden, Jerry Venable, and Pee Wee Barber. He was listed at six feet. He's probably about 5'10", 5'11", very talented. And the thing that made Pee Wee uh, so good was, that one, his competitive nature, but two, he made everyone around him better. He could go from full speed to stopping on a dime and, and, and pulling up and, and hitting jump shots and, 
as a smaller player, I really learned that move from Pee Wee. He could shoot the long range jumper. He could pull up and shoot the mid range jumper. And, and then he was great at taking the ball all the way to the basket. We all would play up there in the Sims uh, parking lot or the Sims Center. And uh, Pee Wee played there as well. And they would beat us up and we'd get better. And then they'd go on and we'd beat the next group up. So. You know, us that was older than Pee Wee, we probably beat him up a little bit, but uh, he learned and he, and he became a great basketball player. Barber was a standout basketball player in the 1980s at Harrisonburg High School. After a stop at Ferrum Junior College, he made his way to Florida State University, where he averaged 18 points per game over two seasons from 1985 to 1987. After his days with the Seminoles were done, Barber was selected in the NBA draft by the Portland Trailblazers. I come home to work out, start playing ball here, come down on somebody's foot at the rec center, break my foot two weeks before I supposed to go to LA to play in the summer league. Go to Portland, I can't run. They send me to the Topeka Sizzles. I come home after playing with them, break my leg. Injury prevented Barber from pursuing his pro basketball dreams and his life would take a dramatic turn. In 2005, he was sentenced to life in prison as a result of drug charges. I was one of those idiots, and that's what I'm gonna say. That's how I was thinking at that time, you know, starting doing things that I shouldn't have been doing. Pee Wee was a very talented player. Uh, Pee Wee was a good person and still is a good person. He made a couple of choices, poor choices along the way. Facing the reality of spending the rest of his life incarcerated, Barber was granted a second chance. His sentence was first commuted by former President Barack Obama in 2016, and Barber was set to be released in 2022. But legislation signed into law by President Trump led to Barber getting freed from prison earlier than expected in 2019. My parents already knew. They knew before I even knew. That was amazing. My daughter and my granddaughters picked me up, and as I was approaching them, coming out at the same time, they was crying, I was crying, man. I'll never forget that day, man. I'll never forget it. With Barber out of prison and back home in the Shenandoah Valley, he is now focused on teaching the game of basketball to local youth. How did we get loose and stuff? We're going to be doing a whole lot of drills, all right? We're going to be doing them quick, over and over and over, repetition drills, okay? Barber has been hosting camps on weekends at Ralph Sampson Park in Harrisonburg. This is something that uh, I've been wanting to do since I knew I had a chance coming home. Basically, man, just doing fundamental work, basketball wise, dribbling wise. He's got a great knowledge of the game and uh, and he's got a good good feel for kids. So I think he'll do well with it. To be able to teach kids at any level or do anything is, is phenomenal. So I, 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 I give him kudos for that. It had to take someone and in his predicament, he chose to be that someone, which was there again, a great, great move on his part to rehabilitate himself and show that he's rehabilitated. I'm proud of that for him to, to really try to give back to the community. I know he loves the Harrisonburg community and uh, I think it shows with these uh, workouts that he's doing. When working with youth from the Shenandoah Valley, Barber's goal is to teach not only basketball skills, give him no time to recover. We go back, we're going back. Okay. but also life lessons. Surely I can give my life, my life story, man, of how a good seed, man, can turn to a bad seed quickly. And I want to start mentor, mentoring these kids too, man. Uh, this is just a small part, man, of teaching kids how to play basketball, man. The next step, man, is uh, becoming a better person. Well, if you're interested in Pee Wee Barber's basketball camps, just search Pee Wee's Skills and Drills on Facebook. We'll be right back.